Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John and I are speaking with Mana Pacheco about our recently completed uh, shoot at uh, the Cinecom Film Festival, number 58, held in the year 2022. Uh, there's a lot of history behind that. We'll probably, it probably be one of these videos that we're talking about. But in any event, it was a great time, as we always have a great time when we tag along with our guide without equal, Manny Pacheco at all these wonderful film festivals. So uh, thank Boy, you, Manny. What are we gonna... Manny, you, you should be feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, we he, he was so long, I think we're done. Uh, we'll, yeah, you know we'll, what it we'll is? Next time, folks. No. Yeah, actually, we ran out of money. We ran out of money, out of money so this is your salary. It's that extra, you know, sob about how great you are. But you are great. <laughs> oh, my. We, we've yes, been John. talking... Uh, we've been talking about various things with uh, uh, Cinecon, uh, playing some of the interviews you did um, and and reminiscing the three of us. I One of my favorites, because I'm an old TV guy, both old and old TV, and one of my favorites was what they called Kinecon at hmm. Cinecon. Now, people don't know what that means, but I knew it, it immediately. Kinney is a kinescope, and right. it's the old method of filming television long before videotape, but putting television on film. And thank God they did because they preserved some of the great shows of the early days of television. And we got to see them at Cinecon. Um, I, I just was fascinated by them. Yeah, well, John, actually, there are a lot of people in our, our audience, uh, and I do remember seeing uh, kinescopes at, at various museums along the way, and once or twice on TV, maybe the old Today shows and things like that. But what they really did was they took uh, uh, a, uh, they put a film camera and they shot a TV camera, in effect, of the show that was going on live because there was no way for them to tape it to otherwise record it. So the recording right. is really a film version of shooting a black and white screen. Yes. And, and those screens in those days were small. I mean, yes. you're not talking about a big, you know, I don't know, 50 inch screen. We're talking seven inch screen, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. re really small screens with very fuzzy content. Yeah. And, 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 and it, you know, in 1947, 48, 49, when NBC went on the air and started, you know, providing local programming and and, uh, you know, uh, here and there, a couple of folks, uh, uh, Robert Ripley was pr producing his own show. There was some news mm. items from Edward K. Murrow. But really, television had all of, you know, um, the, the, the movie moguls against it. So there really was no appetite to preserve anything on television. Sure. So somebody came up with a bright idea that maybe it might be important. And so that's how Kinescope was invented. But I mean, 70 years later, as you alluded to, John, let's face it, it the, the the quality of, of, of the content is very grainy, very oh, low quality, but it, it still it, exists. It, and that's sure, the it's, value. it's not about the quality. It's about the fact that we're just glad somebody preserved it. Right. Um, I I got a particular kick. Of course, they had uh, the Kinecon uh, program had literally dozens of clips of famous shows. Um, Jack LaLanne was a, was a hoot to watch the original Jack LaLanne uh, do his thing. And of course, that was one of the later shows. Warm up, but we're going to concentrate on the midsection now. First one is to lift the right knee into your chest as high as you can, then the left leg. Now, you ready? Begin. One, two, three, four. And one of the earlier shows was uh, an, a soap opera. I, I wrote down the name. It's the called brighter A Brighter Day. Day. Yeah. A brighter yeah. Day. And I got to tell you, watching, it was it was so boring. But it was all we had. It was television. Right? And, you know, there's a story behind the whole soap opera idea. I mean, obviously, um, TV programming, we're, we're just dying for any kind of a sponsorship. And along come the uh, soaps, uh, the soap companies. And they they decide they're gonna they're gonna sponsor these these shows that you know the, the, the of course the iconic ones as the world turns and uh, all of all of those and the soap op the soap opera name came out of the uh, the the fact that they were being um, 
uh, sponsored by by soap companies. So that's yeah. kind of cool. Um, and, and you mentioned you mentioned uh, uh, sponsors. One of the great things in Kinecon was they had these old kinescopes that included the station ID. Channel right. Seven will be back in a minute. Now that kind of thing. Plus, they had commercials. You Yes. Watching these old commercials. What a one of them, Danny Thomas hoot. hosting a commercial giving away a Dodge or something like that, right? Dodge, they had Dodge Fab, Fab Soap was another. Um, <laughs> and it you know, the style of commercials today. There there are many feature films, some of some of them. And <laughs> to watch these old things that which were recorded live, broadcast live, just in, just incredible. Um also John Cameron Swayze. Do you remember that name? Oh, of course. Now, there's a name out of the 50s. For the biggest car of the low price, three tonight. He was the news. Right. Everything had a had a sponsor's Plymouth. name to it. Right. That's right. That's exactly it, it, John exactly. Cameron Swayze. And to watch him as this guy sit behind a desk, talk about, uh, you know, what was news for as that it era. It's just fascinating. In New Jersey since early this morning. When the death of Albert Einstein was announced to the world, a scientific giant who sometimes generated political controversy as well as brilliant equations, Dr. Einstein died at the But I also made note of here, um, Red Skelton Show, mm -hmm. ben Jack Benny Show. The Jack Benny Show brings us guest, Mike Wallace, brought to you by Lipton Tea. The brisk tea and the flow through tea bag for full strength flavor. <laughs> oh, hello, boy. Well, it's about time you got back. But <laughs> this afternoon, I was a guest star on I Search on Adventure. <laughs> uh, Red Skelton, by the way, I swear I, I was watching this skit that Red Skelton uh, from his old TV show. And I swear that uh, I recognize a, a famous actor or two. Well, Red Skelton, of course, was a big film star, and he followed uh, Lucille Ball to television. Once, once Lucy. Uh, just decided to go into television. The floodgates were open. Jack Benny, Red Skelton, Danny Thomas. I mean, yeah. they, Ethel Merman. I mean, all of these individuals that we see um, complement, uh, of course, some of these very local flavor type folks like Jack LaLanne and John Cameron Swayze. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's really wonderful to see something from the 19, early 1950s out from, from Red Skelton as opposed to his well-defined program from the 1960s. I mean, he, he really had it down by then. Of course, yeah. Danny Thomas would not only produce Make Room for Daddy, but Danny Thomas would go on to produce uh, The Andy Griffith Show, for example, with Sheldon Leonard. Uh, as a co-producer. So so Danny Thomas, uh, having early Danny Thomas is really a treat as well because he was another one that needed television to solidify his career. That was another thing. And let me tell you one other thing. Growing up in my house, there's just a couple of things I remember about my parents watching television. Sunday night was the FBI, but Saturday night was Lawrence Welk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. uh, I believe they showed some of the titles of, of the Lawrence Welk show, yes. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, these are names that, you know, that, that don't come up often, but that's the nature of Kinescope. The most celebrated Kinescope actor, for lack of a better, uh, for better word, a, he wasn't really a Kinescope actor, but the, the most that we have of content of Kinescope is uh, 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 Jackie Gleason and the Honeymooners. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, we wish that the Honeymooners was was a better quality look, yeah. but it's not for, for many of them. And there was only 39 episodes. Yeah. So it, it was the, the Honeymooners that led, of course, to, to the, the fact that Desi and Lucy were going yeah. to film on, on, on actual film. So, yeah. But, right. but that's, uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. That, 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 well, I, I think we were discussing it offline. Maybe we did it in another segment about uh, Desi Arnaz, who gets panned a lot 
as like the second banana to to Lucy, uh, 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 even in the recent biopic. But uh, one of the really interesting things was uh, maybe you can fill us in a little bit more about uh, how he changed and why there are a lot of Lucy things around, or Lucy things that are not kinescope, but are actually. Well, why don't you tell us about his innovation? Well, for all you need to know about their relationship is the name of their company company was Desi Lu. <laughs> he could stop billing in that family. And yeah. uh, let me just say that, that Desi, of course, uh, did hated the concept of kinescope. He wanted to preserve the legacy of Lucille Ball. He was committed to that. And and he was going to do it by by setting up this the, the three camera system and, and uh, use of film and using really an important cinematographer in Carl Freund. This was yeah. the man who created the look of Dracula in the 1930s and Metropolis even before that. So Carl Freund was the genius behind the look of, of I Love Lucy. And, and that's all Desi's decision. Um, it would be wonderful to have been able to capture uh, some of the great uh, Uncle Milty stuff on film or, or, or the, uh, the Honeymooners. But we're relegated to, of course, um, kinescope. And remember, back in those early days, what were the popular things that we would watch on television, really early television? Dare I say, before I was born, uh, we were watching children's shows like Captain Kangaroo and Howdy Doody. We were watching early game shows, uh, you know, and, and of course, we were watching um, wrestling and roller derby. I would love to see kinescope of, of, of wrestling. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, John Tolis, the Golden Greek. <laughs> All I can say is thank you, Cinecon, for bringing back every year clips of kinescopes from the early days of television. Even though it's not technically ancient film, you know, it's it's wonderful stuff, and only at Cinecon. I love it. it. It's what makes Cinecon a very special a film festival because they yeah. want to show rarities. Not only um, not only in in cinema, but they really want to show rarities in its full content form. I would imagine at let's say Cinecon 158, <laughs> long when we're gone, <laughs> they will be showing rarities that we will find uh, from TikTok or YouTube. <laughs> yes, I, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. So that, great organization, the, great festival. Yeah, it's, and that's the beauty of Cinecon. So, yeah, thank you for for taking a moment to to capture the whole Kinecon at Cinecon. Yeah, Wond wonderful stuff. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.